Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia and in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real-life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history and our background. And I want to dedicate my today's vlog to our capital Kyiv because the city today celebrates its anniversary of the day of Kyiv. And, of course, I totally understand that when we speak about long history, it's impossible to identify the exact day of the foundation of the city, but all historians agree that Kyiv was founded somewhere approximately in the 5th century, and today it celebrates its 1540th anniversary. Which also proves the fact that Kyiv, as it is often repeated in various chronicles, is the mother of the Rus cities. And Rus should not be equated to Russia, because this is a totally different name and a totally different history. And when Kyiv was already a really big European city, Moscow did not exist. And here in Ukraine, we often say that on its place, there was just a big swamp. And it seems to me that it continues that way even now. But uh, back in the 10th, 11th century, Kyiv was the, actually the largest European city. And I do think that much of our strength and much of our inspiration comes from the period of Kyiv rule and the ancestors that set really high standards of political, cultural and uh, economical life uh, then. And of course, in the Middle Ages, Kyiv and Kyiv Rus and uh, dynasties of our princes were extremely influential and uh, important. And I'm really proud of that period of our uh, life. And much of Kyiv's history is connected with the figure of Prince Volodymyr, also known as Ukraini in Ukrainian as Knyaz Volodymyr, who baptized Rus and uh, who also founded lots of important monasteries and places. And it is believed that one of the streets in Kyiv that was named after him, Volodymyrska, is also one of the oldest streets in Europe and definitely in Kyiv because it was built somewhere, it's, it started in the 10th century, so it has more than 1,000 years. And I do hope that soon the day will come when it is safe to travel to Kyiv and I'm sure if you visit the city you will fall in love with that uh, place. And um, Anyway, another very popular street in Kyiv is Hrishchatik. It is the central street and it looks pretty nice, even though it was destroyed in 1941 by communists who left the city and blew up lots of its buildings. But later they were rebuilt in this Stalin Empire style. But the street looks beautiful and it's important for the uh, for the political events that took place close uh, to it, Maidan Nezalezhnosti, where actually Maidan took place, uh, all of that is located in the center of Kyiv, and Hrishchatik is the widest central street in Europe, and it is 75 meters uh, wide. And uh, also, I'm a great fan of underground. I have already told you that, that when I travel to other cities, I always try to visit the underground if the city has it. And I do believe that Cave Underground is one of uh, the really beautiful. And one of its stations, Golden Gates, uh, also located in the historical part of Cave, is believed to be one of the most beautiful. It is very nicely decorated with mosaics. And there are lists of the stop stations, European stations of Metro Underground, and it is always listed among them. And also one of the stations is the deepest, Arsenalna, and to get to your train you have to travel 105 meters below <laughs> the ground uh, level. And uh, also... Um, there are trams in uh, Kyiv, and in general, I think it's quite convenient to uh, travel with the help of uh, underground. Also, uh, many of you, when I spoke about the Victory Day, many of you recognized one of the monuments, Monument to Motherland, that resembles many Soviet monuments, but it is one of the tallest monuments in the world, and it is 100-something meters, so it's even 
taller than the Statue of Liberty in New York, and it is among top five highest uh, stages in the uh, world. Uh, but I'm not very much into that biggest, highest, and so on. What I personally uh, love KU for is that it is still a very green city and the symbol of KU is a chestnut tree and they really have lots of them. And KU has more than 70 parks, lots of uh, smaller green zones and it lies on the river, on the banks of the river Dnipro or Dnipro River. And uh, there are lots of uh, places to sunbathe and to swim and people actually swim there and it's very popular among the uh, pensioners to do gymnastics and so on. Also you can um, take a boat and uh, there are also boat restaurants on the Dnieper River. I don't know what about now but in normal peaceful times that is a very beautiful place to spend some time. And also uh, when talking about this popular souvenirs that people bring from cave uh, interestingly enough most of them are edible and a very famous cake uh kievski um kievski tort tort is the word for uh, cake in ukrainian and it, it is really tasty it has a long history and uh it is made of a specific dough that is pretty crusty because of whipped um, egg whites that are later baked and uh, lots of hazelnuts. And I love hazelnuts. The, the correct uh, Kievski tort is not with um, peanuts or something else, but hazelnuts. And it's really tasty. And typically it has um, chestnut flower, chestnut candle on top uh, of it. And also chicken cave. Many of you told me about that. I cannot tell you that this is top Ukrainian dish and it definitely appeared later, maybe in the 19th or the 20th century. It's not like borscht and vareniki that is cooked in every house, but of course it's tasty, especially for those people who like chicken like I do. And um, I think Kiev is also associated with um, Klitschko, the mayor. Um, and he is a very funny guy, but because he has so many slips of the tongue when he speaks, he even published a book of his own mistakes. And it was a very common topic for jokes in Ukraine, like what did Klitschko say? Uh, but he has a nice sense of humor and he published the book of this anecdotes of his own and managed to sell it and use the money for some good purposes. And also I am very much uh, impressed, but I actually believed he's a patriot and he was really strong during this war, uh, demonstrating his presence and protection to uh, Kiev. Uh, many famous people were born in Kyiv, and I'm not saying all of them are Ukrainians or identify themselves as Ukrainians, but among those really famous people are Golda Meir, the Prime Minister of Israel, Mila Jovovich, uh, Malevich, uh, Sikorsky, and uh, other like uh, famous people, and there are lots of places in Kyiv that are so are associated with these people. Also, there is one book, uh, one novel, and I'm not sure if it's translated in English, but it is one of my favorite Ukrainian novels, uh, which can be translated as The City. It was written by um, uh, Pidmohilny, and uh, he was a famous Ukrainian writer at the beginning of 30s and 20s, but he is also a victim of the Stalin's terror. But in his book, he very beautifully, in a very beautiful Ukrainian language, describes the life of the city, and that city is uh, Kyiv. And uh, also, um, I love Kyiv. I have been to the city many times, and I hope I will be like many more. But I still remember my first trip to Kyiv was my father, who loved the city very much, and he studied there um, dentistry, and he took me for one of his business trips when I was still at school, and we traveled by train, and train from my city arrives to Kyiv really early in the morning, somewhere close five, six, and I do remember how overwhelmed I was 
when that train was approaching the city, uh, those ro rosy skies, and I had a feeling like, oh my God, my country is so beautiful. And I don't know why, um, it may sound weird, but I felt like, okay, I'm coming into the city where the president lives, and it must be a very magical feeling when you wake up in the morning and you realize that you are a president of such a beautiful country. And I felt like crying, like how overwhelmed a president must be every morning. Morning. And now when I look at Zelensky, I really see how bad he looks because he's going through a really tough period of his life. And in Ukraine, we often compare the photos of Ukrainian presidents at the beginning and in the end of their uh, term. And uh, they really grow old during this period. And of course, the fact what uh, our country goes through right now and all of us go through right now, it's a very... Uh, emotional and very tough period and i'm very proud of kiev uh, that the city uh, was strong enough uh, not to surrender during this russian ukrainian war and it was heavily attacked for more than a month but many uh, people stayed in the city many people civilians took arms to protect kiev and despite the Putin's plan to take over our capital in three days, I'm sure he will never have Kyiv. And uh, saying that Kyiv is the mother of all Rus cities and claiming that Russia is also a part of Rus is impossible because you never shoot your mother if you're normal. Anyway, I do wish the time when it is safe to travel to Ukraine and Kyiv is possible because I think that Kyiv is one of this wild cities uh, that uh, one must see. I have been to many, not not many, but not, not <laughs> okay, I want to be to more world capitals, but I have been to many European capitals and I love them. And at the same time, I feel proud about Kyiv and I think there are lots of places worth seeing. And especially now after they have got their new emotional, spiritual, additional uh, meaning. And also, these are my favorite uh, flowers, peonies. In Ukrainian, we call them pivoni. And they smell really nice, especially when they are from home gardens, not just like florists and so on. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your um, questions. They always inspire my answers. Thank you for subscriptions and Slava Ukraini!